G'day, fellas, and welcome to a casted game. We are here on the brand new expansion for Age of Empires 4. This is the Sultan's Ascent. Spawning in on the south side of the map in the color pink, playing as the variant for the Holy Roman Empire, the Order of the Dragon, it's Beastie. And in the north of the map in the color blue, playing as the Byzantines, you know him as the kid, it's Voldemar. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We're here on Hidden Valley. This is one of the brand new maps released with the Sultan's Ascend expansion pack. And boy, oh boy, isn't it a beauty. It's a bit interesting. I, I'm still not sure if I like it, but let's talk a little bit about it. So it's kind of like the pit, except that it's sealed in and it's very deep. You can see that your main wood line's actually here. And I tell you what, it takes some time to get through it. This here is a standard wood line. And then you've got the extra part around it. So there's plenty of wood in the middle there to be had. When it comes to the outsides of the map, there's plenty of gold down here. You can see we've got double mines on both sides. Whereas on the top side, there's a little bit more stone. So it's uh, it's an interesting map. I'm still deciding on whether I like it, just mainly because you don't have a lot of space in the back of your base. If the enemy comes in and attacks you from this angle, maybe they've got an outpost over here. They can really squeeze you. There's not really much room to work with. That's my only justification or only reason but let's ride on board with beastie and see how he's doing because we've got ourselves an absolute blast of a game for you guys today let's take a look and see how he's starting off so it looks like we've got the two villagers on the gold at the moment seven villagers over on food remember he is playing order of the dragon which means that his villagers are bigger faster harder stronger better all of those good words that kanye west and daft punk sang together uh 24 seconds to train one of these bad boys or bad girls uh, everything is bigger for this civilization. Bigger spearmen, bigger horsemen, uh, bigger knights, bigger land connector, bigger everything. Uh, but keep in mind their landmarks are slightly different. At least some of their landmarks are slightly different. So three of their landmarks are different. Three of their landmarks are the same. Uh, the ones that are the same... Oh, 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 hold on, hold on. We got landmarks coming down over here on the other side of the map. Take a look at this. We got Voldemar already with the Grand Winery. Throwing that down on the berry patch. But just coming back in with Beastie though. Let's, let's talk a little bit about it. Because you've got big units and it's important that you don't underestimate these units because I, I i've told the story before but i'll tell it again it gets really tough when you see six men at arms and you're like eh, i can take it and then you realize it's actually closer to 12 minute arms and have a look at this the mine work it's finally here beastie has made a mine work palace for anybody who doesn't know beastie doesn't like the mine work palace but that's for the holy roman empire that's not for the order of the dragon and I think Beastie might even be up to something a little bit sneaky here. I was going to say, I think he could be going for a fast castle, but <laughs> because he's got the one villager on the landmark, but then I saw him going and taking stone. So now I'm a little bit curious because he should have enough resources to build the town center by the time he gets up to the castle or to the uh, feudal age. Uh, but it'll take a while before he actually gets to the feudal age just because of the time it takes to build one of these landmarks with a single villager. Though I guess technically these build these villagers do build faster. That's important to note. They do build 20% faster than regular villagers. So who knows? Maybe he'll be fine with the one villager. But look at this. We're still very early in this game. 3 minutes and 30 seconds. And we have our landmark almost complete here. Now, one thing to note about the Grand Winery, because we haven't really broken it down yet, and I'm planning to do a video as to why I think this landmark isn't the best. There's one good thing about it in the early game, and that's that your starting berry patch offers you 750 olive oil in the early game. But when you take the Grand Winery, that goes from 750 up to 1200, which is pretty decent when you think about it, because now all of a sudden you can actually access three rounds of Keshiks rather than just one round of Keshik, because a Keshik is 400, uh, it costs 400 for each, and you do start with 100 olive oil in the bank, uh, and that's going to cost you 100 to sign the contract. But we do see what appears to be an early second TC coming through for Voldemar. So both of these players looking to play it a little bit more greedy in these matchups or in this matchup today. Early town center is going to be the way it seems. And Beastie now throwing quite a few villagers over onto gold, but or onto wood. But hold your horses. Just when I thought it could be a second TC, it's going to be a second cistern. And it's quite far away, this cistern as well. Have a look at this. He's got himself an absolutely huge aqueduct running across the length of his base here. Beautiful little position that he's got for it. Let's check in with Beastie, see how he's doing as the age up is about to come through. He's got all of the resources he needs in the bank for his for his town center with the exception of that wood but now plenty of villagers on wood and it looks like we've got the wheelbarrow now starting to come through from that mill age up about to come in there it is and beastie 
available or has available to him three unique technologies for the Order of the Dragon. Let's talk about them. Number one, available in the Feudal Age. You've got Golden Caress, a, a upgrade that I'm not really a fan of. It's, it's, it's an upgrade. It's not a downgrade, but it's just, it's not a very big one. Uh, then we've got Zornhow, which is a very cool upgrade. Allows you to inflict a bleed upon your enemies when you swing your Lance Connector sword. And finally, Bodkin Bolts. Definitely the best of the three upgrades, in my opinion. It allows your... It allows your crossbows to just go to the next level and snipe out enemy siege. So mangonels, no problem. Nest of bees, not a problem at all. Springles, ha, no chance, baby. They can actually snipe out enemy siege. It's quite funny watching them do it. Uh, so those are the upgrades that you've got access to. And of course, all these upgrades are cheaper and they do research faster as well. And the reason why Beastie's doing this is just simply because the Arkan Chapel for the Order of the Dragon, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. It increases your gather rate by 10%. Now, remember these villagers have already got a 25% bonus. So they go to 35% on what a normal villager would be. But when you consider that the Holy Roman Empire, or uh, the original civilization, goes from 0% bonus to 40% bonus with a prelate, and then 40% bonus with the Ark and Chapel, in your head, you might be thinking, well, the Ark and Chapel's amazing. Yeah, it is for the Holy Roman Empire, but not for the Order of the Dragon. The Order of the Dragon is definitely... Uh, look, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they look to buff it in some way. Maybe increase the radius of it or something. Because if I remember correctly, it used to be quite a big radius, but I think they've reduced it down. Uh, but yeah, if I was them, I, I would just be making the radius of the Ark and much bigger. Because at the moment, it's just... Yeah, it's not very cool. Not very good. Uh, but we do have an upgrade coming through from Voldemar. Let's take a look. It's going to be... We've got our settlements coming in right here. There we go. Border settlements. Uh, it didn't really show because we're up, we're going up a hill here, but it increases the line of sight on houses significantly. So you can see this house here. It looks like an outpost at sea so far. And this is wonderful. And you can see exactly what Voldemar is doing here with these, these border settlements. He's looking to gain line of sight up the hill and look how quickly they build as well. It's another thing to note is that they build in three seconds instead of in 15 seconds. For whatever reason on the UI, it shows that it's 15 still, uh, but they do build very, very quickly. It's three seconds for each one of them. Second town center is up here, and Voldemar has begun collecting up the olive oil. So with your olive oil, you have access to mercenaries. So you'll need a mercenary house to do that. And before you have access to those specific mercenaries, you're going to need to sign a mercenary contract, and that's going to lock you in for the rest of the game as to what mercenaries you can choose. Normally, I think the Eastern Mercenary Contract is the best one. However, when you don't go for the Hippodrome, I think that perhaps you could even look at going into the Western Mercenary Contract. But we want to think about what our enemy is playing, what they're going to be doing. If I was against an English player, I'd be thinking about going for the Silk Road Mercenaries, which has access to the Javelin Thrower, a really good unit against Longbows. Whereas today, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. It is instead going to be into the Kashyyyks. And this is going to work well for him because it means that he's going to be able to utilize all of that extra... Um, all, all of that extra um, olive oil that he's generated and get out some early Kashyyyks here. But you can see it's a very passive matchup so far early on in this game. And I think this is largely just because both players are unfamiliar with these civilizations and they just want to kind of stick to what they know. Uh, on top of that, you're on a map that you're not 100% familiar with at the moment. So you just got to play something safe, something that you feel comfortable with. And 2TC just feels safe at the moment for a lot of these players. But one thing to note is that if ever there was a civilization that you wanted to do 2TC with after the changes to the town center, it would be the Order of the Dragon. Now, you might be wondering what those changes are. I'll just run, run, them th run you through them quickly. Number one is your town center instead of... So your first town center, your primary town center, your capital town center, it's unchanged. It's exactly the same. Your secondary town center, however, has been nerfed from a defensive perspective. Number one, it has less garrison space inside. So this used to be 10, now it's only seven. On top of that, let's have a look and see what we've got down here. It looks like a Limitani. Uh, I, I still don't know how to pronounce it, whether it's uh, Limitani or Limitani. Uh, I heard Spirit of the Law pronounce it Limitani, and I was like, Ooh, oh, that sounds good. Maybe I should pronounce it like that. Anyway, so you've got seven garrison space inside the town center. But on top of that, you've also... Uh, got a reduced amount of range. So your standard town center has got a ra range of eight tiles, whereas the secondary town center has only got a range of six tiles. And that just basically means it's harder to defend uh, with with your villagers now, or, you know, just harder to defend your town center from enemy attacks. But because your villagers are stronger, they're hardier, 
uh, it means that if there's a, ever a civilization that would be good at going 2TC, you've also, also got things like emergency repairs, which is just going to help you out because these villagers are uh, bigger, stronger, and it means that they'll survive more, more likely to survive against enemies when you're attacking things like battering rams. But we do now see the age up on the way through. It looks like the first of the gilded archers is going to get caught with his pants down, trying to keep it alive. Is he going to be able to run it back to the town center? You can see how little damage he's taking here, but oh... Oh, what a giga chat! <laughs> what a giga chat! He turns around, he's like, hey, I don't even need a garrison in the TC, watch me. And now all of a sudden the Burgrave's out. Now keep in mind the Burgrave, it is a brand new landmark here for the Order of the Dragon. It's one of the landmarks that has been changed for this civilization. I mentioned before there's three that have been changed, three that are unchanged. This is one of the landmarks that is changed. How does how has it been changed? Well, it produces units slightly faster. However, it produces them for slightly cheaper. I say slightly. It's 30%. That's a pretty decent amount. So it means that your big boy units that were costing twice as much as before, well, now they're still more expensive. It's just that they're not as expensive as they were before. But looks like Beastie now going to be moving into Men at Arms. The Gilded Men at Arms coming out. And he's already picked up that cuirass upgrade, the Golden cuirass. So looking to try and pick that up. And we start to see ranged armor coming in here, despite only being up against... Well, there's only three ranged units at the moment. And I love... Look at this. Both players walling one side. Uh, just, just to try and lock down any potential threat of raids coming in. And I think this is really smart to do on a map like this. Try and control the narrative, control where the enemy can attack. Just keep everything towards one side. Definitely makes sense. But now Voldemar going to be looking to age up himself. He's got a couple of options here with regard to his, uh, with his age up. Uh, he's got the assistant of the first hill. And he's got the golden tower or the golden horn. The golden horn tower. I think it's called that. Or the horn tower. I can't remember the exact name for it. Uh, but in this situation, so he's got he's at three systems at the moment and he's got a decent amount of, of stone in the bank and he's building his fourth one. I would be recommending the mercenary landmark, so the Golden Horn Tower. Definitely makes sense here. And hold on, we've got ourselves a little bit of an engagement. I didn't even realize that. I've got no alarms going off here and it is going to be the Golden Horn Tower, which is definitely the right call for Voldemar in this situation. I think if you're going to go for a really fast castle with the Byzantines, you, you want to be going for that system of the first hill. But other than that, it's actually not that decent, I, I suspect. Uh, I think it might be decent in team games as well if you're playing like really late with a whole bunch of cataphracts. But other than that, I, I think those are the only two use cases for it. But Villager now coming out. Might get caught here. Man at arms looking to try and charge down that Villager. Keep in mind there are upgrades that are also missing from the, the uh, Order of the Dragon. So you don't have that extra movement speed for your Man at arms. That's another thing to know. But four Man at arms now. Keshik's turned around. Not going to be able to find the engagement here. Looks to try and continue chasing. The age up comes through. Doesn't get veterancy on the Keshek straight away. Needs to upgrade them at the mercenary house. We can see him doing it now. He's going to be careful not to lose these units before the upgrades come through. He's got more Keshiks on the way after this. And keep in mind, he's got the Golden Horn Tower, which is going to be producing Keshiks as well. One thing to note is that the Golden Horn Tower is influenced by your Aqueduct and Cistern network. But with this surround here, it looks like the Keshiks should be A-OK. -okay. You can see a, a Gilded Crossbowman in the back is going to be working its way down in the Men at Arms. Oh, hold, hold your horses, ladies and gentlemen. This is where you cannot underestimate the power of these units. Look at this. The three of them. <laughs> you just don't expect it, do you? You really don't expect it. I thought with 100% certainty that Voldemar was going to clean him up right there. And Beastie just says, nah, nah, not going to happen. Siege Workshop coming down. Of all things, I didn't expect that. It's a Mangonel emplacement. I was going to say a Springwood emplacement would be lovely here. I tell you what, a Mangonel emplacement is not going to be too bad either. Crossbow numbers slowly starting to rise here for Voldemar. Definitely the right choice to move into against this civilization at the moment. Uh, but uh, let's let's talk a little bit about these, these mercenaries. So... One of the things to note is that uh, this landmark, it says that the value of units produced increases within a system's influence. So naturally, I just assumed that it was like, okay, as long as you're within the uh, influence range of a system, nice mangonel shot, uh, as long as you're within the influence range of a system, it'll just boost it. But it, I didn't actually realize that it's scaled with the level of the system. So it means that if you've got a level five system, system, it is a cistern system. Uh, I guess that's probably the best way to say it. If you've got a level 5 system system, uh, it is going to produce your units much faster than if you've got a level 1 system system. Uh, so hopefully that's not too confusing for you guys. Siege Workshop now coming out. Beastie. He's got to be careful not to throw away these units early on in the Castle Age. You can see he's still got a couple of Gilded Men at Arms out here. Keshik's going to be looking to try and take the fight against them. But keep in mind, they've got the crossbows in tow. So he can't really pick this fight. I think this is definitely one where he needs to fall back away from this. 
maybe start thinking about mixing in some Gilded Horsemen to deal with these crossbows because they do get a... One of the things to note is this civilization really benefits from having good micro. If you've got good micro with the Order of the Dragon, you're going to have a great time because remember that your units are essentially two for one. So that means if you select a horseman and tell it to attack a crossbow, it's like selecting two horsemen and telling it to attack a single crossbow. So the, the better your micro, the more you'll be rewarded. But Gilded Lance Connector now coming out as well. Looks like you'll be moving into a little bit more of a damage-oriented composition here. Voldemar continues to push in 15 minutes into the game. We'll switch it over to the income per minute. Look at all the, all the production down here for Beastie. It's got the monastery in the back of the base. We'll ride on board with him as he looks to defend in this situation. He's got the outpost towards the west side. Tell you what, the lie of this hill, it's a little bit hard to read. Tell you what, be tough. Putting the pin up, up here somewhere. You'd have no chance of hitting the green. <laughs> you know what, you might hit the green. It's just going to roll. It's going to roll along. Look at the lie. It's, 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 how do I even, I'm, I'm trying to, it's a bit, yeah, there, there you go. Gosh, look, look at, jeez. It's a steep hill, isn't it? Oh my losh. Oh my losh. That's a com combination between Lord and Gosh. Uh, but uh, let's let's move on. We'll, we'll follow along with Voldemort and see how he's doing as he begins working towards that god tier mid game for the Byzantines. Let's take a look and see how he's got. How is uh, his base is expanding? So it looks like we've got some pretty decent farms. Uh, I want to select all of his systems and just see how they're working, how they're buffing up all the villages. And look at the beautiful base building coming out from Voldemar. The fact that he's got all of these systems interconnected, making sure that they're covering everything. But hold your horses in the middle of the map. Voldemar just playing with fire right now. Zornhauer going to be coming through as well for Beastie. That's definitely something you want to avoid fighting against. You want to try your best to kite your way away from it. And let's just take a look at the remarkable base building here from Beastie's opponent, Voldemar. He's managed to secure up a bonus on every single one of his villagers that is on or in this base at the moment. Beautifully done. Very little overlapping space. Only in this central location is there slight overlapping space. The one recommendation I would make is just to make a fifth system. Just make a fifth system over here and just connect it. And then that way you've got an extra 5%. Your buildings have got an extra 20% for the military production, an extra 50% on all of those little upgrades. You know, it means that you're doing extra research rate, extra military speed presidium slightly better it's it's just a nicer thing on top of that you've also got faster uh rates for your golden horn towers as well there's lots of good stuff that really uh are going to affect it but towards the middle of the map we now see the final frontier opening up for this map and that is a chop through now remember that the chop through mechanics has been changed but hold on we'll talk about it later as we've got ourselves a little bit of a battle beginning to unfold all of the spears nowhere to be seen in fact i take it all back there are no spears out here it's lance connector trying to deal on this front line you can see the crossbows on the back doing a decent job here i feel like beastie needs a mangonel he's just getting absolutely wiped out that's one of the downsides about having these units it's that they've got large health pools so it means that units that normally overkill them don't overkill as badly as they used to. Think about archers. Think about crossbows. You've got 30 archers and they all shoot one men at arms. Well, now all of a sudden they're killing two men at arms instead of killing one. So it's a big difference and it definitely sets a civilization like the Order of the Dragon back. Something that you need to be very careful of and very conscious of as you play this civilization about what type of units you'd like to be making and what type of choices you're going to be making about, to, you know, should I go into cavalry? Should I go into siege? That sort of thing definitely don't think you can just be playing a full infantry style here as this civilization unless you go into archers if you do go into archers i think it's it's a hundred percent a strategy that you can do with this civilization playing into gilded archers because of the unique upgrade that the they have at the archery range so we can take a look and see if beastie hasn't already picked it up he hasn't take a look at this dragon scale leather an extra three ranged armor so think about it you know you're fighting up against these units and all of a sudden an extra three armor that's massive that's a huge amount of extra armor so i'd love to see him pick something like that up and keep in mind that when you're playing as the order of the dragon because your archers have got more health on them than the standard archer they're a little bit more i wouldn't necessarily say immune to mangonels but they're definitely a lot hardier and it means that they're going to be able to survive those mangonel shots more easily than their crossbow counterparts or their archer counterparts from other civilizations. We've now got that final system level in. And there you go. He has indeed brought it out over here. Great little spot for him as well. I love the way that he's extended this out. Keep in mind that when you are making uh, your aqueducts, they only cost two stone, but that obviously when you stretch them out all of this distance, it starts to really add up. But it's definitely worth just the 20 or 30 extra stone 
to throw it in out to this resource point rather than just like putting it down here. So really nice call here by Voldemar. But it's starting to look good for Voldemar. I tell you what, the, the one thing that concerns me is just a horse bow, a horse bow, a, a horseman uh, switch by Beastie. And that's exactly what we're seeing. He's got three horsemen out on the field at the moment. Three more in queue there. There they are right now. Five horsemen coming out. And this is, this is what could turn the table in this fight because you've got 158 versus 157 pop pretty damn close when it comes to the economy here. Beastie's farms are gone. Oh, farming economy looks really good. And the focus, I, I suspect, in the late game is going to be over the golds. And you can see that that's why players have looked to wall off on that north side and just set and forget about it. You can see neither of them interested in taking that north side and instead looking to focus their attention on that south side. That's where the golds are. That's the most important part of this map because without the gold, you can't be creating or training these, these impressive units once you start reaching this mid to late game period. So let's take a look and see how Voldemar's doing back in his base. Oh my lord. I tell you what, is it isn't it just the most beautiful thing? I'm sorry, we got to do it. We got to we got to have a look at this base. I'm gonna get a nice little angle in here as well. We'll throw it in like that. Have a look at this. Have a look at this base. I'm tempted to go into my options and turn off health bars. It is just so damn beautiful. Let's get back to the action though. I, I hear units might be clanging swords. They're not really. They're just getting upset. And we got a lot of siege starting to come out here from Voldemar. What is this all about? What's the go with siege? Now, siege is pretty important, right? If you've got siege and your opponent doesn't. It's going to put you in a really decent spot. But that's on the condition that you're not making lots of melee units. And look what Beastie's making. It's all melee units. He's got a single arch off, seven crossbows out. It's really not much in the way of ranged units. So all of these mangonels, don't get me wrong, they're nice looking and they smell good. But I tell you what, it's only a matter of time until that oak gets burned to the ground and it's going to smell even better. I tell you what, nothing smells better. I mean, there's probably things that smell better, but I love the smell of fire. Uh, not like... Oh, the mango nail shots. Those were pretty big. I'm not talking about your standard fire, though. I'm talking like a... a, a I was going to say a house fire. No, not those. Oh, look at the lands connects go. Big connections coming in crossbows. The horseman just looking to overwhelm his opponent. And all of a sudden, we've got trouble coming in for the Byzantines as Beastie overwhelms his opponent, says, Good night, sweet prince. I heard you like siege. Bad luck, my friend. There's nothing to kill with it here. And now, all of a sudden, Beastie looks to turn the table so damn quickly on his opponent. It looks like it might be a good game here. I don't know exactly. I, I don't know any way that he's going to be able to hold on to this, especially with the Lance Connect swim, swinging. Look at them go. Look at them swing their Zorn House towards their opponent, just taking out all of those units, getting that extra bleed damage in the heels, trying their best to come in. Oh, I just realized. Does the Keshik heal cancel out the Zorn House bleed? It might. It could. It damn well should. It is technically a heal. So for anybody who doesn't know, the Zorn How bonus is cancelled out by any healing whatsoever. At least it, that's what it says on the on the box. Uh, it do, we can't see the upgrade right here, but I can assure you that's what it says. Maganel finding some shots on the way through. Oh my god, look at the difference between these two. 103 versus 19 on the military count. I can't believe it, but I, I don't think that's butter. Uh, that is, uh, it's, it's, yeah, that is, uh, there's no way that's butter. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, Voldemar looks like he might be in trouble. I think that we could have ourselves an Order of the Dragon victory today. He's trying his best to hold on. He's only one villager down, but the problem is he's 80 military population down. And that's never going to go well. It looks like he's managed to break through on this and keep going up in the back of the base here. He's broken down the aqueduct. Going to be restricting that network. Villagers having to run for dear life. They know the power of the lands connecting this situation. We're going to enter back into that cinematic mode. Keep in mind, Beastie's still up about 60 military population at this point. Villagers continuing on the run. Crossbow numbers looking solid for him. Under the, underneath the TC, there is, is he holding this? Was it the crossbows? No, nope, never mind. He's not holding anything except for the resign button. And he, he is just saying, let's go for the next one because this one is over, fellas. Go and check out these two creators. I'll leave links in the description of where you can watch Voldemar, where you can watch Beastie. And if you haven't already, make sure you pre-order. At least go check out the expansion pack, The Sultan's Ascent. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can buy it on Steam. I'll catch you in the next one.